Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a really good bean recipe, start to finish. Uh, cooking time is one hour. You'll be eating about an hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, again, you can vary this recipe and everything like that. And you will see how easy this is. Uh, first thing I want to do is get the stove on high. And I got my pressure cooker here. And if you watch my other video, you can see the pressure cooker. This is the one I'm using right here. And you will see how easy this actually is. Uh, first thing is I got seven cups of water. So we'll add seven cups of water. And all I'm doing is I'm starting that heating up. Because we want to get this under pressure, just to start heating that water up, because I just got it out of the tap cold, just to save pressure time later. Now, the next thing is, is one pound of beans. One pound of pinto beans is almost exactly two cups, the way it works. So I buy a bulk, so I just get two cups. Uh, these are dried, not soaked. The only thing I did to these is I rinsed them to get the little dust and make sure there was no little floaty stems or anything like that. So, and again, you just uh, put those in. The next thing is half a cup of dehydrated onions. Now, when you make them, you can uh, if you if you're going to use a regular onion, use about a medium onion, cut it up. Uh, I keep I have these dried onions, so it's a half a cup of dried onions. Uh, the next thing is six beef bouillon cubes. Now, if you want to use beef broth, you can. Um, I have used that uh, or that better than beef broth. Uh, you know that better than better than ham broth or whatever it's called. I have used that, the ham broth. It's too one-dimensional to me. The beef gives it a little other character and everything like that. Uh, if you want to get the low sodium or whatever you want, but the little beef in there add something and if you you can use all like beef broth instead of water and then you don't have to have the bullion cubes you can do that too uh, the next thing is ham um, this is a little more ham than I normally put in if you see my hand there uh, I usually use about my fistful of uh, meat and we usually use ham because we like ham we'll get the spiral cut ham and obviously it's too much always so what I do is I cut ham up and I vacuum pack it and I vacuum pack it and throw it in the freezer in amounts of about my fist size. Well, this one here actually was at the end. I didn't have enough for two. So there's this one's a little extra, so there'll be a little bonus ham in this one, which is always a good thing. Now, normally when I put this in, it is completely frozen. Literally, I take it out of the freezer and I put it in here. Uh, and it goes in as it goes in as a chunk, okay? Uh, and it thaws and then when it's done it pretty much almost falls apart or you can cut it up if you have to. If you don't want to use ham, you can put three, four, five slices of uncooked bacon in there. You can put some sausage in there. Uh, this is cooking for an hour so it will cook. Um, I'm real hesitant about putting like raw chicken or raw some kind of sausage. I'd cook it first just to make sure. Uh, just better safe than sorry. And the last ingredient is thyme. Now I went out and picked these. I put the stems and all in, uh, and once I'm done, I just f feed the stems out. You can clean them all off if you want. Uh, I don't know. If you use dried, I guess you'd use about a teaspoon maybe, maybe a little less, half a teaspoon somewhere there of dried thyme, because dried thyme is a lot more powerful than regular thyme. And, but I just went to the backyard and picked some, and I know somebody will probably asked, so I looked at the variety, and that is a German thyme right there. Uh, but that's basically it. That's all you do. And of course, this one here, see if I can do this with one hand. Put it on. Yep, pressurized. I put my label up and I make sure I'm on pressure. And I just wait for it to come under pressure. I'm going to turn this video off right here and I will turn it on again so you can see what it looks like on the next step. If you notice here, this little yellow dot will be sticking up here in a minute. So I'll turn it back on so you can see me put it under pressure. And again, you don't start your timer until it's not fully under pressure. So that's it for now. Okay, it's been about three, four minutes and you can see the pressure. You can see this yellow thing here now. Uh, it's actually sticking up and I can't, you know, I cannot move this back to open it up because this will not slide anymore. So all I really do now is I know this one I turn down to medium, medium low and that's good and then you'll see if you keep it on high you'll see steam trickling out here and you'll steam trickling out of here. 
But that's basically it. Uh, if you use that big pressure cooker with those weights, it would be steaming out the top. I'd want to wait five minutes before I put the weight on, like I said to uh, my other video, if you watch that on how to use it, to purge it out. And if you use the automated one, well, it just started the timer already. So now you start the timer at this point here for the one hour for these beans. And I'll get to you when I'm done. Okay, what I did is I purposely kept the pressure up a little bit. Uh, just so you could see this. If you can see what I put up before, I turned it up a little bit just so you could see. And if you, if you could probably see the steam. Let me go to the angle where you can see the steam. It's kind of hard to see the steam maybe against my hand. Whew, that's hot. But steam's coming out. You can hear it. I'm going to be quiet for a second. If you hear that loud, that constant, it's too high. So what you want to do is you want to turn it down quite a bit because you barely want a sound. You want a tiny bit, but barely, barely, barely want a sound. Because if it goes under pressure, this will drop. So that's a huge indication. And if anything goes under pressure and it stops, you have to start over because pressure cooking works is the total amount of time. So, And one thing I don't want to forget to mention is if you're making this recipe and you use black beans or navy beans, I've made them before too, add one cup of water. So you have eight cups instead of seven cups. Uh, uh, they take a little more. The same time of cooking. Uh, I think the official time for this is like 45, 50 minutes for dried beans. I go an hour just so I can remember and it seems to mellow the flavors a little bit but you you would want to add one cup for those two type of beans because those will take a little more and if you got really super old beans you might have to add a little more water because beans last almost forever dried beans but they just get harder and harder and harder and harder so that's it as soon as it's done uh in a little bit you'll see this coming down you won't see it but the pressure won't be as high and then when it's done i'll show you what the results are okay it's been one hour I'm going to do the quick release on this, you can see. Um, I just know i got to turn it like this because steam's going to come out of here when it turns sideways big time. And I want to show you how this can be and how, you know, I guess dangerous this could be. Uh, this is the quick release. You can just turn it off and uh, obviously you want to turn the stove off. And uh, it'll go down on its own because you can't open it up at all. But if you do the quick release, like I'll do here, you'll see. And uh, once it's going, it'll take a minute or two, but I'll talk about some other stuff, and you'll see how violent this will get. And I'm sure you can see that, that this is... I'm uh, probably six, eight feet away, and I can still feel the steam. And you can hear how loud it is that, yeah, it's quite violent. Uh, while it's doing that, I want to talk about a couple other things. Uh, what we do is, matter of fact, I'm not even going to talk about this. is too loud. Once it's done, I'll, I'll uh, talk about the rest. Okay, it stopped. Uh, you can hear me now. I just couldn't talk with that was so loud going on. But what I was going to say is what we do is we put the beans on top of mashed potatoes or rice. Uh, and this is actually some sweet potatoes. Uh, sweet potatoes grow better here, and sweet potatoes are actually better for you than regular potatoes. Uh, what we do is, when we get them in the garden, uh, actually my dad does most of the work, so I'm sure he'll watch this. So thank you, Dad. Uh, he'll sit all day and cut a big, huge pot up, you know, you know, a 10-gallon pot just full of diced up sweet potatoes. And you know, sweet potatoes are harder to cut up than regular potatoes because they're harder, so... Yeah, my dad does most of the work. But we cut them up, we boil them, then we mash them. And then these yogurt cups you see like this, uh, you can see it matches and fits in. We fill them up with the mashed cooked sweet potatoes, and then we freeze them overnight, and then I take them out and I vacuum pack them. And they last for a long time. And then make sure you always date stuff you vacuum pack. And then anytime we want mashed potatoes, we just take them out. And a trick is don't cook them in this, <laughs> or thaw them in this. If you open this up, it comes right out. If they're thawed, uh, boy, it's, it's a pain in the butt getting it all out. So take it out and thaw it in another container. But then we take this out. And then what we do with the beans is we put a little bit of the beans on top of the mashed potatoes for the meal. It's really good. And then if you want it spicier, add some jalapenos. You can add some jalapenos to the cooking, or the candied jalapenos that I have. I like those on top also. And this meal freezes very, very well. 
You can put the mashed potatoes and then put some beans on top and freeze them at any time you need a quick lunch or a dinner, take it out, thaw it, you're good to go. But here it is here, you can see the yellow's down, which means the safety, which means I can unlock it. And anytime you open a pressure cooker, when it's the first time you open it away from you, just in case there's steam left, there shouldn't be. But here's what it looks like here. And you can see they're all perfectly cooked. Now, some people think, oh, that's too much liquid in there. Uh, you can cut back if you want, but I keep some of the liquid when it's on top of the mashed potatoes. And it's really good. And you can see here, and if you had big chunks of ham, a lot of it would fall apart. And you can see here, all I really have to do is just go like this for about 30 seconds and get the stems out. Uh, like there's a stem right there couple them out or when I dish them up take them out then but that's all there's to making this bean recipe it is literally that easy so I hope you guys enjoy this and make some of these it's a really good inexpensive meal like it says you can make a big batch of this this pressure cook will actually hold a double batch but that's a lot of beans if you want to make a whole bunch at one time and the good thing is is the double batch cooks the same amount of time as the regular batch if you want to freeze a whole bunch of them, just to have, you know, you'd probably get 15, 20 meals out of this with the mashed potatoes or the rice on there. So, and you can freeze the rice just like the beans. So, that's it. Oh, one more thing I want to say is if you just want to cook the beans with nothing in it, you just put the water and the beans in here and just cook the beans and you're done. Then you can add them to any recipe. I know there's people that like to freeze just plain cooked beans and then take them out and cook them. So you would just add water in the beans and cook them just like I did. And then you can freeze them or do them whenever you want with. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Thanks for watching.